This video breaks down why the Philadelphia 76ers are rolling and it's potentially scary. With Joel Embiid and Seth Curry lighting it up over their last 10 games, and Andre Drummond keeping JoJo fresh by backing him up at the 5 spot with solid minutes, the Sixers present a dangerous threat to any opponent. After numerous playoff failures in the past, a lot's changed in Sixer land since then, and while they're not the number one seed like they were in 2021, Philly fans are seeing their newly built squad compile the fifth best record in the Eastern Conference and have currently won seven straight ball games. We're going to delve into how they've shockingly achieved that and why Philly could make a big time trade at the deadline. But before continuing, only 11.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll give you a follow back. Link is in the description for both those platforms. I posted a Sixers video back on December 12th, breaking down why they're quote unquote way better without Ben Simmons. I later would assume that take would age poorly because, well, it's the damn Sixers after all. And also, I regretted undervaluing the defense and slashing of Ben Simmons. But conversely, Philadelphia may be proving that vid I made to be the truth after all. Regardless, this Sixer team deserves some respect after all the messy drama they've had to deal with involving their all-star floor general and all-NBA defender in Ben Simmons. And sure, being without the Aussie has been challenging at times for the Sixers, but with the development of Tyrese Maxey, among several other young talents bringing their games to new heights, 2021-22 has been surprisingly a solid season for the improved young Sixers. It's a fan base that's maybe a little too tough on their team from time to time, but Philly does rank second in home attendance behind the Chicago Bulls, making Wells Fargo a fairly loud building to play in. As a Raptor fan, I know it's much louder than Scotiabank Arena right now, but the Sixers are actually only 8-8 eight eight on their home floor, surprisingly boasting an NBA 7th best 15-8 road record, which could bode well for them come the postseason. So how are they storming through any opponent placed in front of them right now? Well, it's not been the toughest schedule by any stretch as of late, but Philly's still doing what they're supposed to in impressive fashion. On Monday night in H-Town, facing off against the young, bottom-feeding Rockets, for the seventh straight game, the now 23-16 Sixers took care of business. The Doc Rivers-led bunch blitzed Houston with an early surge from the jump, pouring in 36 points in the opening frame, and mercilessly winning each quarter on their way to a beastly 111-91 blowout over the bottom-feeding Rockets. Joel took over yet another game, going for 31 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 dimes. Thanks to Embiid, the Sixers are now up to 5th place in the Eastern Conference, one game back of home court advantage, and are within striking distance of the 1st place Bulls, only 4 games back. Given Joel was able to rest for the entire 4th quarter, with the deep bench getting plenty of garbage time run, it was the perfect win for Sixer fans, who are witnessing the process JoJo play the best ball of his career. Now molding into one of 2022's top MVP candidates, Joel Embiid got off to a typically injury-prone opening to this season, dealing with a knee injury along with a stretch on health and safety, which forced him to miss 10 of his team's first 20 outings. But in the 28 games he has been on the court for, give Joel credit for performing exceptionally more than making his presence felt, but initiating the physicality and dictating the pace of games, especially over the last few weeks. For the second time in as many weeks, the process hosted a masterclass against the Houston Rockets, and you can bet Daniel Tice is going to be haunted by the mere mention of Joel's name for many years to come. Debatably the best big man in our game right now, next to Nikola Jokic, Joel scored over, around, or through the German like a steaming hot knife slicing through soft butter. Joel dropped an easy 17 in the opening frame, tying his season high for his most points in any quarter. JoJo converted 13 of 13 at the foul line for the game. Meanwhile, on a play-to-play -play basis, you could see Tice arguing with the ref immediately after hanging on Joel's arm on the way up. With his well-rounded offensive repertoire, Embiid can do just about everything, which makes him impossible to slow down. Embiid was finding his teammates in the half court, leading the break in transition, and anchoring the defense exceptionally. If it was necessary for him to participate in the fourth, we're likely talking about Joel putting up a 40-point triple-double. Still though, 
Joel became the first sixer in franchise history to score at least 30 in nine straight road games. That's more than both Allen Iverson and Wilt Chamberlain had in their careers. He's not the clutchest player, he hasn't had his fair share of playoff success, but the most respectable part about Embiid's game is that he doesn't just overpower people with brute force. He's equipped with an abundance of abilities, which he displays with a variety of jumpers consisting of pull-ups, turnarounds, and stepbacks. It's extremely rare that a big man has all three of those jumpers in his bag. What makes the three-time All-NBA player even tougher to stop is the fact that he can drop home easy finger rolls at the rim and make smart passes against double teams. Watch this play from midway through the first quarter against Houston as he brings the ball up the floor, goes behind the back, crosses over, and pulls up for a jumper simply unguardable at his size. Over his last 10 games, Joel's posting insane averages of 31.2 points, 10.6 boards, 4.5 dimes, and 1.5 steals. Efficiency-wise over that stretch, Embiid's shooting 53% from the fields and 40% from three. Coach Doc shared his opinion on why Embiid's doing better recently, saying, Joel's mixing it up. I think the biggest change is, he went through a stretch where he was taking a lot of jump shots and not a lot of power, I think he's establishing that he's the biggest and baddest player on the floor early. That sets up everything else, end quote. Game by game, Matisse Thybul is finding his flow on the offensive end to round out his overall value. Matisse had a quick trigger against Houston, draining two of his five attempts from distance. The pair of Thybul and Embiid is forming a fluid connection with Matisse actually in the dunker spot as Embiid continues to hit a cutting Thybul for buckets out of that alignment. Matisse had an extremely productive offensive game, which was still the weaker side he played on, given he remains an earth-shatteringly disruptive presence defensively. He had three more steals, affected a handful of shots, and simply terrorized the opposition from all angles, appearing out of nowhere in the blink of an eye. It's pretty amazing to watch this young man get down in a defensive stance and clamp up. The highest form of respect you can offer Andre Drummond's Monday night showing was that he gave Sixer fans little to no worries when Joel Embiid was resting. The former Laker and Andre was stellar on both sides of the floor throughout the entire game, swatting his former Detroit Piston teammate Christian Wood out of bounds immediately upon checking in. Drummond delivered life to Philly on both ends, keeping possessions alive on the glass with five offensive boards and bullying his way into Wood for some forceful hoops in the restricted area. Andre does all the dirty work. For example, sealing his man to allow a teammate a clear path for an easy bucket. He also had one of his point center movements, directing traffic up top and hitting Isaiah Joe on a backdoor cut. It was a nearly flawless tag team effort from the Sixers' five men in JoJo and the Big Penguin. Moving on to Seth Curry, and while he missed Philly's last game against Houston, He's been the Sixers' most consistent and reliable perimeter threat in 2021-22, and you can't forget how well Curry played in the 2021 playoffs. Over 12 games, as the Sixers came up one open Ben Simmons layup away from making the conference finals, Seth quietly posted 19 point per game averages on a crazy 57.8% from the field, and get this, 50.6% from three on seven deep range attempts per game. His brother may get all the credit, but Seth Curry deserves his fair share of love and respect as well because based off his top of the league efficiency, in addition to the lack of attention that he gets, the Sixer shooting guard is extremely underrated. Overall, Philadelphia just keeps on rolling. And as I said, Embiid's starting to resemble a legit MVP candidate. The schedule is definitely soft, but they're taking care of business. The trade deadline's now a month away, so what happens with the Ben Simmons saga is going to be insane. The Sixers certainly look like a squad that's one all-star level piece away from being contenders, but what's the most fascinating part about the 2021-22 Sixers? Best answer in the comments earns next vid shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says, I was very much impressed with Clay's return last night, but the most dangerous part about it was the quality of shots he was able to generate for himself while moving with and without the basketball. Quality take from Ona, pause to read the rest of it. Hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.